America. <laughs> I, uh, anyone who has seen the first part of this meeting knows that there was one member of this board who could explain capital non <laughs> and do it year in and year out. And so I would like to place the nomination of Lisa Hebner to Lord Shane. I would like to second that nomination. Any other nominations? Any other discussion? All in favor, please say yeah. Aye. 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 Uh, <laughs> uh, no one is more qualified to vice chair than my colleague Arthur House, and I proudly place his name in the nomination. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we are now going to get on to the uh, discussion of the motion, which can be found on page four of your packet. The motion is just is wrapped. Uh, I anticipate it will be amended and changed by the board members. It's just a starting point. Um, to walk us through it, you'll see the budget policies are on page five, and I just want to go through those really quickly. These are the same as they as we affirmed over the summer, but we do have two members, Art right, and um, with us, we'd like to them with them present as well as our policy to review policies over the summer and not in the height of the budget process because we don't like to um, have major policy changes while we're in the process of deciding how much to spend. That's a bad uh, best practice. So, general fund assigned has been targeted at 15.5 percent, debt service 7 percent, or below, not to exceed 8 percent of the operating budget. Pension and OPED investment assumption, 6.5%. For members of the public who just completed a year ago an experience study, you affirmed that that's a reasonable rate. Health insurance, 20 to 25% of expected claims may use one third of excess reserves over 25% to reduce the 2024 2025 health insurance costs. Tax collection assumption rate, 98.5%, using conservative budgeting as uh, defined by the government. Association. Bonding term, 10 year bonds for this year 2020 <coughs> projects, not to exceed the life of the project, with uh, the exception of the bottom line that needs further bonding. Capital and operating budgets, um, use objective budgeting for operating and capital budgets, meaning coming in as close to actuals with any contingency clearly identified. Objective budgeting forecasts expenditures as accurate as possible with well making optimal resources. For revenue budget, budgets, for variable and volatile revenues, use conservative budgeting for variable and volatile revenues. The conservative revenue forecast <coughs> systematically and reasonably underestimates revenues in order to reduce the danger of budgeting more uh, spending than actual revenues we be able to support. In addition, there is a policy preference for end-of-year revenue surpluses so that we can put towards building reserves, paying for future capital projects and revenue. Assumptions and methodology to be clearly stated for public transparency. But for known and reliable revenues, objective budgeting to be used. For known and reliable revenues, that would be uh, state municipal aid and revenues budget should be budgeted uh, objectively. Balanced budget required by state law, budget to be structurally balanced without using one time revenue sources for ongoing operating costs. Governor's budget, the municipal aid to be budgeted as proposed. Capital reserve fund. Minimum reserve balance, and this is a point of discussion. I put it 500,000 holding, but our board has expressed it to 750 to a million, so that would be a point of discussion as to where we would like to end. And to be available for supplemental appropriations for emergencies, cost overage, zone plan, town matches, for grants. Gross expenditures. <coughs> we generally budget gross expenditures, but one of us sometimes does budget net. showing us what the growth so we will show the growth even when we can't budget uh, at least for some areas. And best practice is compliance with all town financial policies, municipal financial best practices, and any agency recommendations. So before we move on to the second phase of that we do our budget modeling, I just wanted to get um, input from members on the policies uh, 
So for the town operating budget, um, including the fixed costs that we went over earlier in the evening, and then for some of the items that were already built into the projected modeling, we're at about a $28 million operating budget for the town. Again, the same thing, we just added our fixed costs to the school operating budget, $84 million there. Our cash for capital, um, we have cleared out since that is not anything that is included within the fixed cost, that is all negotiable. 
Our debt service, um, we included based on our updated debt service projections. Again, you saw those as part of the fixed costs. All right. Just before you go, debt service from the previous year, that's a 14% increase. That's the million dollars we have highlighted. Correct. Um, the anticipated revenue, um, twelve million three fifty-five. This is a decrease compared to the prior year. We we're anticipated to um, lose our mill rate revenue that was coming from the state, which we have a meeting on. So we'll see what happens with that. So if you take your gross expenditures of one hundred and twenty-two million less your anticipated revenue, not including tax collections, you get your net expenditures of one hundred and nine million. This is a budget increase of 5.1 million over the prior year, or an overall budget increase of 4.91%. Okay, so just pause there. So you think, oh no, 4.91%, and here's where we see the power of the grand list. Because mm -hmm. even though it's an expenditure, it's the grand living, which is the amount to be raised by taxes, mm -hmm. 4.91. Correct. It does not equate to a tax increase. Right. So then we plug in our um, grand list information, so our supplemental auto that we anticipate getting the property ta taxes based on the mill rate that would raise the, um, the amount of net expenditures that we need. We have a tax collection rate of 98.5%. Our actual collection rate is 99%. We budget conservative at 98.5%. And then, then this brings us down to our anticipated mill rate of 32.13 mills based on the fixed costs. We add in our fire district mill rate to get a total mill rate of 33.13. And this is a mill rate increase over fiscal year 24 of 1.31 mills. To a $350,000 home, this gives them estimated taxes of 9,982. It would be about a $407 increase over fiscal year 24 or 4.25%. And then down here, we just have the home impacts of a $450,000 house, $550,000, and then a, a small vehicle. And Amy, we just got our um, median tax, uh, median value of home is now uh, $380,900 or $398,900, I can't remember. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Close to four. Yeah. That million one for supplemental auto, mm -hmm. why are we expecting that? Um, so after the mill rate, I mean, after the grand list is done, we have vehicles that come in that the tax assessor then sends out bills for that were either not part of the original list, they came into town, they moved out of town, things like that. So we expect to collect about a million dollars on those. So very roughly, the, the 4.9 doesn't equate to the 4.25 because the, our grade list is increasing by 0.7% roughly. Correct. So kind of, kind of yep, you got it. When you have a very strong grand list, suddenly this is very doable. Yep. Um, so I had asked Amy because uh, we have COLA 3.2 and uh, CPI just dropped to 3.1 in December from 3.2. Uh, Chairman Powell has indicated that he anticipates it will drop to 2.8 and that will be the final number for CPI. The reason why we care about that is we'll get to the municipal cap. But that is generally what is used for the municipal cap. So I asked Amy to model both a 3.2 and a 3% tax increase because um, to get to that, given the grand list as it is today and the non-tax revenue is as they are today, what would that be to the operating budget and the board of select? We cannot change that service because that um, is paying for projects that are already passed and So how should we think about last year? Because we had the reassessment, right, and the sort of moving target, but the average taxpayer saw an increase of what percent? 5.18%. Mm -hmm. Most homes 20%, saw... 20% of our homeowners saw a 12%. Yeah, 20%. Oh, I know, it's a pretty yeah. wide, it's a wide There speed. was a very wide, 10% saw no tax increase, but it was a, it was the largest tax increase I've seen in the 15 years. Mm -hmm. But on average, it was 5.2%. Yeah, 5.2%. Um, so this is just another model with the quick calc. So um, if we did the 3.2% um, tax increase and we translate it to above, based on the current grand list projections, our debt service remains the same. Um, it would give about, if we broke it up between the town and the school, about 1.75% um, budget increase for the town and the schools. 
Matt and Mark say that's easily achievable. <laughs> I don't say that, but they say that. Yeah. Close the school. Well, so what, there's a couple of things we know that are going on here. Is that achievable given the fixed cost of this? And the answer is probably not without some serious adjustments. Right. Reductions. So the question is, is three lays of the school. What, how do we want to think about that? This is an initial target. Amy, if grand list comes in at 1.2, what happens to? Gives you a budget, I mean, uh, anticipated tax increase of about 2.56. So, if we get a 1.3 grand list and we want to keep it at 3.2 tax increase, how much more can they increase their budgets? Then, let me see if these are hard coded. These are hard coded. <laughs> if you wanted to stay at 3.2, you said? Two and a half percent, a little bit under. So that that starts to get into the realm of possible. It's still going to be very difficult to make. My thinking on this is it's an initial target. We're thinking about one. We don't have the priorities. We have some of the fixed costs and not fixed entirely. We do know CPI. We do know COLA. Two ways to think about it is okay. This is really what we can afford. Let's start with that, and then you go through your process and tell us, you know, Kat, this is all we can afford. We need to do more to steady the legs of the school to get us to where we are providing the education we want to provide, the town we want to provide, and then have you come back to us and tell us why, you know, what, what do you need, what do you see, what's going to need a, necessitate us to do a tax increase higher than three to. I think they all recognize doing a tax increase over the so it becomes a communication tool to really explain. I think we're going to see some unfunded mandates from the state on the special education side that are going to require us to do that. We may not have flexibility there on that one. And then there may be choices that your boards will consider that are not palatable to make and deliver the type of uh, services that we think are best So I'm trying to think, honestly, how we frame the conversation, right? Because what I'm hearing is a willingness to consider need beyond what that tax increase would be. When we started with fixed costs that are well above that. So the conversation would start with significant reductions to get to that before we even get to the mandates and the conversations of what you're talking about. So I'm just trying to think about a, a true budget process that doesn't start off um, in that way, right? Because you're right, you hit, on, you hit on some of the target points, but are we into, I mean, are you asking us to rationalize our fixed costs? I guess that's what I'm hearing. 
like a deeper dive into our fixed costs. Yeah, I'm asking you to look hard at your fixed costs. So what, yeah. what savings can you capture with a vacancy rate? What can you, can you, what can you do? And I'm not saying this is not a, and we aren't there yet. We it's a genuine there. question just yeah. because we haven't had this dilemma before because we've used these markers to frame right. guidance before, but we've never had the grand list in the equation with the enrollment at this time. So it really is creating a different yes. kind of starting point. Absolutely. I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. So the way I view it, and I probably should have opened it up because it's a board of financing, but of course, I'm very happy to have your comments. The way I think about it, and it may not, this board may think about it differently, is I view it as a starting point. Our board is to look at what, it's just like a home budget, you know, uh, everybody's pay got cut 10% one year, or somebody didn't get the bonus they got. What do you do in that situation? And some of it's, And I don't know what the answer is because you haven't done your evaluation. Um, we're just asking, I think about it, it's just asking you to think about the numbers are the numbers. And how close can we get to that without sacrificing to the point that you're comfortable, you know, on your service level and your mandate permits. That it may be that you come back to us and say we can't do that. We have a conversation. We ask you to walk us through why, and you know what type. What does that look like? I don't. No, I was just trying to get at. I, I totally understand. Just trying to get at relative yeah. to the fixed cost number because our jump off point has always been a fixed cost. Number. Yeah. I would think about it this way. We, we talk very calmly during the trial board section about. Uh, I think it's a challenging year, but what we talked about was the grant list growth right now is projected less than one percent. As you yourself pointed out, we're not going to be able to uh, offset that with decreasing enrollment. We're talking about a capital plan that's uh, got squadron line booming on the horizon, and we have no idea how we're paying for it. Uh, uh, we've lost revenue from last year, and last year we had the largest tax in memory. And so all of these things mean this is not just a challenging budget year. Amy has projected enormous, uh, at, at, at the rate we're going, enormous tax increases over the next five years, where people will be paying 25% more than they have paid since from last year just to live in the town. We all sent our kids to Simsbury Public Schools. You know, we know it's very valuable resource. But the decisions we make on the budget affect who gets to go to those schools. So it's, you know, you're not necessarily, it, it, it subsets of offering certain programs means you're taking the school away from others. And, and so I, I look at this as a time when we have to really cut to the bone. And how we go about that, you know, that's really, I don't have the expertise to do it. Uh, and it has nothing to do with disrespecting what, what the schools are doing or what the towns are doing. But it's just a, a question of, of how we keep the town uh, a place that the same people can stay in. Well, we have members' comments. We have, um, we're going to start with our Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I, I don't know, I, mean, I think maybe a way to go about this could be just having done these types of things in the past is to pick whatever the right round number is that moves the needle to get to half a million dollars, and what would the first half million look like for the like, computer kind of forward, you know, and start to look at a couple different layers of that to be able to make the decision. I think to do it open-ended, I just worry that it'll be like, well, nothing should be cut, because of course we support the school system, and I've got three kids in the school system, so I'm not a fan of, you know, nothing's going to be obvious, so I, I think, trying to be objective and emotional about like, what, is, what are a couple layers of whatever that round number is that look like and what would, what would have to go. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're back in a tri again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, so, I'm going to keep it down just to our Well, no, I mean, I yeah. feedback, but I mean, that's what I, I, think, I feel like we should, we should <coughs> cut across everything, the fixed cost, 
version, see where that comes out, and then the other alternatives that we already think that we're, we're kind of leaning towards. We'll just say 3.2, and, and let's look at the difference to start with, just for the numbers, and, and, and see, like, you know, what's the space between them? I, I just don't remember it because we've been in the numbers. Uh, <laughs> and may I send you um, the Excel spreadsheet? Unfortunately, my, I lost power, so I wasn't able to send this out in advance. But when we think about, um, we were at 4.23 on fixed costs, correct? Maybe. Is that where we ended up? <coughs> it was oh, yeah, with debt service. 3.58. Oh, no, I mean a tax increase. The tax increase of the 3.58. Oh, with the fixed cost. Yeah, it was 4.25% tax increase. And that meant a Board of Education budget of 84, 840, 852, is that right? Mm -hmm. And a uh, town budget of 28,245,721. Mm -hmm. To get to 3.2, that um, change would go from the 84, can you? The math on the unit. We're going to reduce it to 8396991 to get to a 3% increase. Wait, hold on. 83. Oh, I, I'm using the wrong number. Oh. For the 3 2, it's 840469. No, that's the wrong one. Oh, shoot. 80. <laughs> <laughs> when you did the, um, can, we, can we do an extra line where we started 4 2? Two, two, Point. Start fixed at three. Cost. Where are we? Is that the fixed cost? This is the fixed cost. Can you do another column that shows us where we are at three two? Next year, <clears> so we can see the difference. Yeah. Tax increase. Tax increase. Tax increase or operating? Tax. Oh, okay. Tax increase or operating? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Max increase would be, or the town's Oh, this has the um, 
the increased granulus growth. That's why. So I'd have to change that back. Maybe. This has the 1.75 with the 1.2. just over 25%. So we're still trending well. If we continue to trend well, um, that 20 to 25 percent, we could go down to 20 percent and see what that gets us. So that's another bucket that we'll be able to pull from. You said two before, Lisa. Is, is it 1.2 or is it two? For what? The decrease. You were talking about a decrease. So I was just trying to understand where you were coming up with two. Or... Oh, I added the 488 and the Oh, and the 1.4. I just figured it would be more like one, two, because like we're, our budget's we're trying to take a 1% off, right? So we went from a four, five, six to we a, a four, two something to a three, two something. Yeah, taking 1%. 1%, 1 of 120 million is going to be 1.2 million. That's right. So I just think we're trying to sell more for 1.2 than two. Yeah, that's probably true. Strong just trying to come up with some good news. That is better news. Thank you. <laughs> so 1.2 million on 120 million. That's one percent. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can we do that? Can any one department do it by itself? No. no. But can you move it around? Is that within the realm of reasonable? Maybe. Maybe not. I think that's where the dialogue and the collaboration comes in later. Is that a horrific ask? I don't think it.
And looking not just at where we were at 5.18, what like Michael made, 20% saw 12%, uh, but extrapolating out of the years to come, to me the larger picture, because we don't have input, we haven't got pressure back, we haven't talked about the specifics yet, is what, what makes me, what bothers me is that I feel we're, we're, we're sort of a fork in the road here. <coughs> is Simsbury going to be a town in which we extrapolate the education costs as we have in the future, given that 3% of is salary about it already, mm -hmm. uh, to extrapolate that to the future vision, to extrapolate where the town budget has grown and pay for it, in which we become a wealthier town and make it less likely for elderly and new people to come into? Or do we really do cuts that we haven't seen in the past and recognize that a part of our town is going to be diverse, it's going to be a positive place where people can retire to, we know people can stay in. And I, I haven't seen this in my four years here on the board, uh, but I certainly do see it now. And I think it goes beyond the pain we're facing for this year and next. But I mean, if we tack on, you know, continue to do four or five percent tax increases, it, it changes the very nature of the town. It becomes a wealthy community and an exclusive community to the kind of people who live here now. Or we restrain those price increases and perhaps change the nature of the town. So I, I'm troubled by it, I'm trying to I, I realize that's not necessarily helpful, but um, it does give me a bit of a Yeah, that goes to the importance of growing the ground and economic development and what we can do there, although that takes time. It's debatable how we've been growing the grand list, if that's really sustainable, right? We're, there's a commercial, you know, the Hartford left. It's not going to be replaced with another commercial entity like that. We held on to Ensign Bigford through, you know, some very creative actions a few years ago because they were looking to leave, mm -hmm. right? So the only thing that seems to grow and the only thing that seems to come in here is is more housing and the housing that's coming in is much higher density right so that's hopefully going to create some of that diversity that we're all hoping for right and, and supportive of um, but is any or all of that sustainable right i mean that's that's where i'm just on Mike's edge, right? That every component of our budget is like up against the wall. And it's only going to get harder as more people are brought into the town with all of this super high density housing and, you know, squadron and all the schools being engaged that they are. And, you know, Town Hall is a really old building too, right? And you know, we've been trying to build a senior center for Lord knows how many decades. Um, you know, there's some really interesting needs and really important ones. And I just, I don't know, I'm not creative enough to figure out how to, how to do it. But uh, we're, uh, we're all going to have to find ways to, to make sure that the resources are there. Right? So that we can do this stuff. Yeah, and the only, it was interesting, there was just an article by the OEC, was in writers, um, where they issued a statement about the future of national governments across the globe. And they said we're entering a period where there is going to be slow revenue growth, like since very soft revenue growth. And that's going to mean um, making substantial cuts in those communities not willing to raise taxes. The question we have is, are we willing to fix taxes in Simsbury? And some of us, um, I think there are some people who are. They say, you know, I'm willing to pay for this. I, I, I see the benefit. It's worth it to me. They're going to be 20%. We know who might want it, but can't. Uh, and then there are going to be some in between. So that's why public input is going to be so important, because it's not just affordability. It's also willingness to pay. And that's why we need to hear from the public to understand how do they want to spend their tax dollars? Is that where they want this money to go? And some people will say yes, some people will say no. And 
the answer is probably going to be somewhere in the middle. And our job is to sort of weigh the three legs of the stool. Okay, I always think that Susan Selena and I used to have this debate what we do first, but we're expenditures, and the answer is it depends. So we don't know. With municipal budgeting, it's not like a business. It's paid for what we want to spend on. The question is, what do we want to spend on? How do we communicate that? Um, I don't think this is a bad place to start, saying, you know, look, we saw your fixed cost trying to find a million in savings. We have tools to do so. We've got health reserves. We've got capital reserves. Hopefully, the pension number will come in better than when this OPEC is funded fully, 100%. Congratulations there. And let's try and be as creative as we can and try and get as close to that number as we can, because this is on top of the 518. And Remember, 20% of our residents saw tax increase over 12% last year. So it's just the numbers are the numbers. And let's try and get, try and balance this duel as best we can, knowing that there are these competing things. But I don't know. Anyone else? We're going to have to kick an hour. Right. And, and so what we tried to put up there is. The first column is the fixed cost, the K, column K, the yellow. Mm -hmm. And then the column next to it is... What we need to get to to get to 3%, 3.2. 3.2? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but there's still, because the town operating actually goes up from K to T. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's... <clears throat> Amy, that is not making sense because you've got projected <coughs> fixed costs at 28245 and at 3.2 percent the town gets to spend more. How is that? Hmm. I think no matter what we slice it, it's going to be about 1.2 million that versus the current budgets. Unless okay. my math is way off, I'm taking 1% of 120, which I don't think it is. Just doing back So I think we got to just, yeah, back the envelope. And I just think we owe it to the taxpayers to at least have gone on record to me to understand what it looks like. Yeah. And that's why I come back to the, like, what does 300 grand do? What does 400 grand do, right? Like, none of it's easy. But to just have a sense as to what those scenarios look like, I think is important. Doesn't mean we're going to do it, but I think it's important. The other thing that would, I think, be interesting, Lisa, is I think earlier you went through some of the comparables by town. Do we like where we sit on a per capita basis of our taxes and mill rate and everything else? And do we have any headroom? Because this will, let's pretend everybody else goes up by 3.2 and we go up by 4.2, right? So we, we just gave up 1%. Did we have 1% of headway to go or are we behind? So if we're behind, then this is absolutely required that we think about getting 1.2 back. But if we had a headway, then you could say, okay, we're, we, you know, we're, we're cheaper to live here. I find it hard to believe, but. So it depends on what you're. I know, they won't be completely apples to yeah. apples, but I mean, the board of finances traditionally use the big four: so Sinsbury, Avon, Glastonbury, and Farmington. Yep. Among those, we're on the high end of taxes. The uh, superintendent of schools and the prior town manager used a broader comparison base. They include West Hartford, Granby, South Windsor, and among those, we're in uh, I, I would say middle. It's hard to know because probably less directly comparable to those towns. It left, I, are those comparisons the right comparisons? I don't know. The policy boards haven't chosen those. Those were chosen by right, um, but still reasonable comparison is. And then the question is, um, what do we know? We know that um, a business came to us and said taxes are too high. Mm. Give us an abatement, or we're leaving town. So that's one indicator we have. Right. Um, but we also know that we have some parents and some people who left open space and said, you know what, raise my taxes. I care about this. So we have these competing, which is why I'm going to say it again, we are an arbiter community. <laughs> we have to balance those competing interests and needs. And, and that's why this job is hard. It's not a formula. You can't say, well, if it's this, it's this. It's going to be the push-pull, the advocacy, well, what does this mean? What can I do? Where can I find that? I can tell you, like, $2,000 is going to matter to some committees. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so every penny is going to matter this year. Mm -hmm. To be fair, every penny matters every year. Every year. Well, from our, our perspective. But, you know, sometimes people say, well, the administrative cost of doing it isn't worth it. Mm -hmm. This year, yeah. 
because it means somebody's not going to be able to do some programming that they want to do uh, if we don't do that. Um, and you still trying to pull that up? Yeah, I mean, the numbers are great, but I don't know what's in the projections for the fixed cost that's not in the other one that I'm trying to reconcile. I don't know if I can do it quickly, but. pointed out that we, um, in her estimates, it's fixed cost and her other projections, so some of the other projections may come down. So it's not just the fixed cost. Right. So if we can get thank some you. of the other Yeah, thank you. Uh, good night. Thank good you. Night. Yeah. Amy, we said earlier that we use a, a and I know you've said this before too, we use a conservative collection rate of 98.5 versus, what, what is our historical? Is, is it like, does it tend to be 99 like flat? Yeah. 99.4, 99.5. But last year, it, we had a significant loss, about 700,000 from motor vehicle. About a half a million, yeah. And so every few years it happens yeah. that we get less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason why we use that conservative budgeting, and I go back to it, is that government financial is so that we can fund capital reserve. It's true we could cut it and get one year of savings, but now you don't have money available for capital reserve and you need to budget it the next year. So it is a one year savings for Ray. Next year you've got to budget for it and make up that clip. And that's on top of the debt service that we're watching. Um, Paul had would, it, would it work that way? Because I would think if you just assume 99% every year, you pick up a half a million dollars every year. Well, the bottom line. Mm -hmm. What's that? Wouldn't fall to the bottom line. Right. But if it's truly conservative, I, I thought it would fall to the bottom line. But then it wouldn't be available. If you're putting it towards right. operating, it's no longer right. available for capital. It's a funding source for the capital. Oh, because we don't fund the right. capital part. We, we would then have to fund the capital part. I got part. you. Right. We're back to zero. Oh, right. Right. Okay. We're back to where we were. I'm just trying. It's the... It's the <laughs> Gotcha. The, that free cash model. On all we all new members go right at that. <laughs> Every single so you awesome that you follow, we all go down the same rabbit hole. <laughs> so the new town manager. <laughs> 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 it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> I, it, it's a it, it's different. I get it. I yeah. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. And not every town does it that way. Some people, but I will say what happened in Farmington is they do it opposite. They budget the capital, and guess what happened when they had a terrible budget year? Cut the capital. It was gone. Yep. Yep. Is yep. it going to come yep. back next year? No. But if you budget the conservative revenue, that is a more stable uh, funding source, even though it's variable revenue because it's not the same amount. Of yeah, year, I get it. But I get it's it. going towards a, a variable cost, which is capital. It's not the same number every year. That's the policy reason. Why. Um, and also, once you've done this, it's very hard to change it. <laughs> and actually, it has worked for the town for many, many years. We've been able to keep our taxes stable. The challenge this year is grandmas. So that's where we are. Amy, are you able to pull up a number to get us to 3-2 using the projections? What Matt's number would be? 3-2 for tax increase. What do you mean using that number? Board of Ed and Bruce Slackman. If they're going to project, a, they want to know what's my number. We say we're not going to do a tax increase above 3.2%. What's his number? What's Wendy's number? So that would be 28,410 for the 83,620. So why is that number more than the projected? 
than the fixed costs and regular. Because the fixed costs have the other um, projections that I used. It's not just fixed costs. But the original projection in November was that? Was no. 457. Where's 457? Now, in November, you with your projections, you were projecting a tax increase of 457. Right, so those were my projections. Right. I replaced my projections, the fixed costs only, re-input the fixed costs, kept the rest of the projections, and that's what this is. Oh, I see. We can't do that for column two. What do you mean? Can we use the same projections? Do you want me just to fixed? do fixed cost projections? Is that what you want? Whatever it is that you did in column K, yes. You know, the, the, the terminology keeps <laughs> jiggling. <laughs> what is column K showing? Column K is showing the fixed cost plus the rest of the non-fixed cost with my assumptions, with okay. my projections. Okay, so could we do that in column T, but also project a tax increase of 3.2%? No, so, so we're at 3.2% with these. So that would have to be, these numbers would have to be inclusive of your fixed costs and everything else. So let's work it backwards. We start the budget at 2024 and 27, 921, 564, and 82, 182, 136. Mm -hmm. We would like a tax increase to be 132, I mean 33.2%, right? right? What are the numbers and the operating budgets that get us there? Yeah. You're not looking at the yellow column, right? Where the next column We're over, so what are the comparisons? So if we go to quick help over here, you'll see that the 3.2% tax increase okay. translates to, to the 20 and the 83. Okay. Let's, let's go back. So let's say column T, right, we use the same fixed cost projection. You did that, is that right? No, column T is just based on what you want for a tax. Just for the tax increase. You can't have both, you can only have one or the other. <laughs> Not easily. Yeah. <laughs> right, Anything because the fixed cost projections would take, take us time. over 3.2%. Right. Exactly. So that's our problem. So then we can't. Yeah. Wait, the fixed cost take us over three points? Oh, yeah, yeah. We have more fixed costs than what this well, is going to do. That's just the difference. The difference. Yeah, to make sure that the 127. And the it's T to I, though, right? It's T to I. It's mm -hmm. not T to K. Right. Do you want to see T to K? I think what's confusing everyone is that K, yeah. the difference between K and T for right. a town operating budget is actually going up. Mm -hmm. I think everyone was expecting that you would have decreased. Yeah. The 28245 and the 84840 by like roughly the same percentage into comp T. But K has assumptions in it that we can't do easily. In right. T. Exactly. I'm just surprised it goes up though. Yeah, why would they I would think it would stay flat or down. Because I have other assumptions outside the fixed cost, like say 2% for supplies. We're not seeing that as part of the fixed cost because we don't look at those as part of the fixed cost. But it was fixed cost and your projections. Yes. I tried it. Slash assumptions. <laughs> well, fixed costs and assumptions brought the tax increase from 457 to 423, right? What's 457? That's what we were projecting in November. Okay. Then we got fixed costs and it came in better. Hooray. Mm -hmm. 423. Yeah. And the 423 was a reflection of fixed costs and the other projections, right? You kept those same projections, but just adjusted the fixed costs. Right. That's what this, that's what K is. So if we are, and that leads to a 4.23% tax increase, right? Yeah, yeah 4 to 5. Okay, so go back up. So we, are, we said we need to decrease that tax increase. Right. 
and you're showing that the Board of Ed, to, de to get it down to a 3.2, the Board of Selectmen can now spend 200000 more. How is that? That's what we're not understanding. And I also don't, now I'm not here. Here, what is <laughs> oh, I think you did you use a different percentage? Are we sure that gets us to three two, Amy? Right. Yeah. Can you go back to the thing before? You have um there on net expenditures one hundred and twenty nine forty six in a column T. That can't be right. No, all the way down. Yep, that. Wow. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Which is about one point, that's our 1.2 million reduction in amount to be raised by taxes. Is that right? Yeah. About a million. Roughly, yeah. So, why, what we're not understanding is if we're reducing taxes, to three two from four two three. Why is the board of selectmen able to spend more? I mean, I have to go through all of my assumptions to see. So obviously, I either decrease something, or I don't know. I guess I have something. Yeah, I'd have to dig into each of the lines. As to I think why. we're stealing money from the board of ed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. Let, can you can you can you go back and keep the board of selectmen? where they were and add to the Board of Education. But then, but then the full one point, let's, let's call the 1056 1.1 just to round it, right? If we're going to just hold the town operating budget flat, you're going to have to make up that whole thing in, in Board of Ed. So it's going to be the 848 eight is going to have to go down to 837. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the only way you'd be able to make the numbers work. To me, like when I look at this, I say if it's 1.1, 1 .1, the rough split of those two top numbers is like, 80-20, so one of them's gonna have to come up with, the Board of Ed would have to come up with like eight hundred to $900,000, and the town budget would have to come up with the remaining like two or 300,000. And since since T is is giving uh, the Board of Selectmen more, 170,000, that brings that 1.056 closer to your 1.2. 1.2, that would be like 1.3. So I'm, I'm starting to think that New Art's approach Maybe, uh, you should audit solution. it. I'll tell you, Bert, you need to audit that one, but go ahead. <laughs> but I guess what are we trying to get to? Are we trying to like let the board know? Yeah, would we would like, like you to come back with a scenario that says minus 800,000 on your, like, we have to give them, like, fill in the blank on the 800,000, essentially? Well, so I would like to say we don't want to see a tax increase above 3.2%. To get there, here are your numbers. Right. Which I think we could. We could say your current minus eight to 900,000. And maybe have them do two scenarios, like show us what the first 400 would do and show us what the next 400 would do. Right? Yeah. Because obviously it's going to cut more into the bone the further they go. So, Amy, two things. If 2024, mm -hmm. we spent 27, 20, with your fixed cost based on what we just projected at the 425, that's the budget, right? Column K? No, that's the fixed cost plus my other assumptions that are included in the in the model. Which so that would be how you got to the projections of four two three. What is missing in column K? As to why it's less. <coughs> no, just missing? just what's in there. It's just your projections I mean, and fixed costs. Fixed costs are closer to actual projections, everything else, right? Right. I mean, like, it's, it's all just magic math. Every <laughs> single one of those rows, right? right. So it's, yeah. It's all it's literally line by To line vet that, it, we'd be here all night, which you didn't bring enough sandwiches. But if you, to Art's <laughs> point, to get that lower, you do 70, What what's the total amount we need to reduce the total budget to get to 3.2%? You think it's 1 million? Can you just change those two numbers, the 28, 245, and the 84, 840? I mean, because I, I don't think we care whether cuts come from 
fixed costs or variable right. costs. Right, exactly. Uh, so you could kind of, don't save it, kill, kill the formulas and just say, you know, 27,921 times 1.175, 82, 182 times, and I think the formula should work down. All right, so then it, it, it should come out the same then. And I make those suggestions not knowing how the model works. Beautiful. Right. Okay. Beautiful. Sure. Okay. That's literally call and take. Right, right. <laughs> 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 it's already on the screen. Yeah. 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 No, that's without the but, all the running. But I think that, that proves it. Yes. Um, <laughs> Let us feel like we came up with the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's like, you just blew all my assumptions. <laughs> so, right, so, so now Thanks. it's undo, undo. Are you sure, yeah. Tom? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And then do on, on column U. Well, yeah, it's. The, it's I, I thought it's, what you were going to say is like take column K now and just multiply both of those cells by 0.99 because then you get your 1% safe. Oh, yeah. let's do that. That's brilliant. So redo, redo. Uh, you could have left it where they were, I think. I don't know. Redo, redo. And now what do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, wait, this, well, that but is now you're point not. Point to that is, you already, you already solved it, though. I was saying, Amy, like keep it what you had in your baseline for K. Yeah. Okay. And then humor me for a second, and you can tell me if I've lost my mind. Okay, and so if you could recreate that the new column again, like you were going to. Yeah. And then just go and sell T whatever, say it's equal to the cell next to it times 0.99. That's times 0.99. Yep, and then do the same thing with the cell below it. Okay. Now that should give you roughly a $1.1 million save. Yes. Roughly $1.1 million. Yes. And which that, if that's 1%, that should give you your 1.1, which gets you back to now going from 4.2 to 3.2. So if that's what we were saying before, if the Board of Ed comes back with something in the eight to nine hundred thousand dollar range of a save, they get you there. And if um, the town operating budget is decreased between two and three hundred, that the sum total of those two get you there. Right. This, this whole theoretical is on basically a fixed cost discussion, right? I mean. There are I guess coming, we're challenging they're going to be coming at us with all right? kinds of really fun stuff that are going to blow these two numbers out of the water. Oh, yeah. Not even big stuff. Supplies, software, and, I mean, you know. Because those, those aren't even in here yet. Yeah. Correct. But this they, is, so no, they are in there. They're in there. Those amounts are. Yeah, my original ones. Some of them are. We're talking Not about actual. limiting the increase. Yes. Let's just make that clear. We're not saying cut your budget by $900,000 or even $40,000. We're talking about limit the increase by 800. Yeah, or don't come in with those cells in the T column. Like you can't come in higher than the 228 right, and the 84, basically. However, you get there. It's gonna be and that could be done not only in operating, it can be done in capital, using some health reserves. I mean, honestly, are they going to be able to do that? I don't know. But that's why we have the initial guidance and then the comeback and the discussion yeah. about. Yeah, give us a target and we'll tell you. And get as close to it as you can. And then, so then we can make a decision off of that, right? To say, like, that goes too far. Like, we wouldn't want yeah. to, right? Right, exactly. Or we could look at that. Right, right. exactly. Oh. Lisa, can you ask a small question? Is, it, are, is that okay with that? Yes. So if you could scroll down where you show the increase at 4.2% at the different housing rates, could you do the same for if it was the 3.2% increase, just to give like a, a, an absolute dollar amount increase on the tax burden? Sorry, no, you know what Yes, if it was 3.2, but 350 would be 308, for 450 would be 393, for 550 would be 483. Thank you. Just the 10 minute warning to the library closing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're reconvening the rest of the Yeah, I think I should have. Okay, so we have that. 
is our board comfortable doing a 3-2, saying this is a target, we're open to discussions. We went through in my slide, which I'm sure you guys were riveted, talked about the things that could change, including expenditures, revenues, needs. I, I think that the starting point is thing 3.2, you, you can tie it to COLA, uh, and it's not to, you know, what, how it thinks it might be, you know, this is something that we, we know it, 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 it's targeted and we'll get used for other things. And, you know, be open to the conversation that as, but uh, that gives a starting point. Okay, so we have, we'll take the motion in a second, we'll go one by one, and then um, on capital, I mean, I know Lee proposed cash for capital realistically, or model cash for capital. I modeled it. He's not, he's not proposing it, Mark. Do not put it in. <laughs> I think we're 100% agree on that. We can't do that this year. We're not going to add to this problem. <laughs> I don't even think we need to do that as part of the motion at this point because that's kind of obvious. <laughs> okay. All right, so with that, um, I'll ask for a motion, whereas the budget development process for fiscal year 24 20, 25 is in, in its initial stage, and whereas budgets have not been finalized, discussed, or approved by the Boards of Selectmen and Education. Notwithstanding that information, updated estimated estimates may be presented to all boards in the next few months, and such information and estimates may result in the Board of Finance exchanging initial guidance uh, given in December. Move effective December 19, 2023, to approve the following initial guidance to the Boards of Selectmen and Education for the fiscal year 2024 budget development. One, consistent with guidance in prior years, uh, bonding mm -hmm. agencies, recommendations, professional advisors, municipal budget, and best practices, the Board of Finance adopts the fiscal year 2024 2025 budgetary policies to be incorporated in the 2024 2025 budget and to ensure the long term fiscal health of the town. Before I continue with the motion, are there any objections to where we sit with that? Okay. For fiscal year 2025, the December target tax increase guidance is tax increase at or below 3.2%. With a need to provide uh, budget targets to the Board of Selectmen and Board of Education copying us. With the understanding that the following non-exhaustive list of contingencies may result in adjusted guidance at a later date, revenues or expenditures are better or worse than initially projected, unfunded state mandates require towns to spend more, and urging our health and safety need has been identified that cannot be reasonably the offset for reductions elsewhere, changes in economic or social condition of the town, policy boards, priorities, so that we can avoid education, we know we haven't done that, and public input. So we have those things, a 3-2 and the budget policies. Would someone like to make the motion for those two? So moved. I think we were doing it together? I yeah. think so. Fine, second, I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The initial guidance, again, we will, in January, we will have updated grant list and give you additional guidance at that point. Um, we do have the Board of Finance Rules of Procedure, which we kind of have to do. I just added a consent calendar as an option, um, and I changed the Board of Finance traditionally gives three minutes of public audience. Of, Rules of procedure at five, so I changed it to the three that has been on So those are the only changes. I have a motion to approve the proposed uh, 2024 meeting dates with those changes. So on favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion carries. We also have a motion to approve minutes uh, for November 14, 2023. Uh, please advise if there are any changes. I think I'm going to be abstaining from this, right? Yeah. I'll also abstain. Okay. Okay, quiet. Can I have a motion, right? Can I approve the minutes? Of yeah, that meeting wasn't uh, televised. So no, November 14th was. Oh, no, oh, okay. that one was. Sorry, the October one. <laughs> yeah, all right, I, I move to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We have Amy's 30 second finance director's report. First question is Are we still on target for about $2 million in revenue? Uh, projections and are we feeling? Yes, yeah, still on target from the last projections I gave you. Any material changes in expenditures or revenues that we should be aware of at this point? No, just the ones that were already noted in the report. 
anything else for the good of the order of this board that we should be aware of? No, that's not right. All right. So with that, I thank you everyone for a long evening. I hope you will finish eating. <laughs> I may have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.